Folks, today on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel, we're letting the chickens roam. This is gonna be a fun time. We're gonna show you guys the moving farm and why we keep things moving here on the Stony Ridge. Let's set these birds out, have some fun. Woo! Morning, Moo Moos. Hey, Butthead, how you doing this morning? Twenty-four. Yeah. There we go. Come on. Come on. Get up. Get up. Good girls. That is perfect. Tickle. Let's go play with the chickens. What's up, guys? Come on, birdies. Daggone it. I left the stinking sprinkler on all night long. Dum dum. Ah, you idiot. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. I just called myself an idiot because I was being an idiot. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the farm. Today's video is gonna be fun. It's about a farm in motion. And the reason a farm stays in motion, just like that sprinkler I left on all night long last night, uh, the reason a farm stays in motion is because moving our animals is what helps to feed our land. And we don't overgraze, we don't overstimulate, and I'm gonna fall down in the mud. Holy cow, this is really over water. You idiot. There we go. Oh, so I've got sprinklers going here, 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 all over everywhere right now because that is so slick. That's gonna mess up the yard. Oh, oh, don't fall, don't fall. <laughs> uh, I've got sprinklers going right now. It's the hottest part of the summer, the dog days of summer. And for some reason, my stupid butt decided that I needed to plant new grass back here behind the shop, but it's doing fantastic. Let's run down to the chickens. We've got the chickens in our mobile coop and we're actually gonna be moving the cows across the road, across from where they have been for a month. We have had a super dry spell here in North Carolina and that has dictated a lot of different activity here on the Stony Ridge Farm. So typically I'm moving the cows every 12 hours here and I've cut back to moving the cows, gosh, every month I fed 42 bales of hay out here to these cows on this land while we're waiting for rain and it still has not rained any significant amount yet. It's been pretty sad. But I guess while we're out here, let's make lemonade out of this lemon. The reason why you see all this water flowing down through here, this is the pattern or pathway that the water comes off of this hillside from the shop and runs down through here. I've got to get some grass established out here. If I don't get any grass established or any kind of root structure, next time we have a downpour, which it's summertime and we're gonna have downpours, next time we have a downpour, it's just gonna wash a gully about knee deep all the way down this hill. So it's a little bit stressful when you clear off a spot that's this big, and this is probably uh, about an acre or so, and it's taken me a lot of work. I'll get you some footage of uh, all the work that we've done in the past while we're talking right here and picking up rocks. <laughs> so let's go down, check out the chickens. We're gonna move those guys first. Grass is looking good. What we got in here, kids? We got any squash in our edible landscapes? Not ready to pick yet. Well, that one is. <laughs> Waited a little too late for this critter. 
That is a chicken snack now. Awesome. Let's turn this back on. Way down there, the sprinklers are sprinkling. Water for the chickens. Gotta carry some water down, it's hot. This is the time of year. My dog is acting like a spoiled brat. <laughs> he knows whenever I let him out in the morning, he's gotta to go to the bathroom, but he slowly walks up, so he poops right beside me. <laughs> uh, story of the dog. So right now we've got about 70 of these American breast chickens, or American breast chickens. We have not had rain, a significant rain, in over a month and these stepping posts are extremely hard to get in the ground. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and if we get a sprinkle of rain it helps to soften the soil just a little bit. We got a tiny sprinkle yesterday and it wasn't so super hot so hopefully this move goes okay. We'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and make more sense in a second. For eight years now you have been going and being a good boy and pooping. Yes, sit down. Very, very good. I'm so proud. Want to shake? Yes, I'll shake. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. Okay. Come with me. Come on. To the lady that tells me that you need to take that dog and ride him around on the four-wheeler. Buddy, would you rather ride or would you rather run? Which one do you want to do? I know, I know. This is not the best system for hauling water, but I've been doing it all summer long and so far so good. Life hasn't been that bad. Mama, party time, it's chicken time. So we've got awesomeness going on down here. We've got the garden right over there. It's looking fantastic. I have to water it once in a while, not too much. It's very drought tolerant. We have the honeybees over here, all the fruit trees, very cool. This is our setup right here for our mobile coop. This is Premier One fencing. And this is called the egg mobile. This is what I am gonna be using for eggs. We're gonna check it and see if we're getting any eggs yet. First thing we gotta do is turn the electric fence off right here. This is a Premier One product also. It's called the IntelliShock 120. And that powers the electricity on this and has saved us from being consumed by foxes. Last year, all my chickens were killed by foxes. All of them, a hundred chickens killed by foxes. Not cool. This is our hay for the cattle for the winter time. And there's hay stashed in various places. Again, the moving farm, that's what today's video is about. The cattle move throughout the pastures here on the farm. We've got about 85 fenced acres and the hay for each perspective pasture is already positioned in that pasture. So we back up with our baling roller, hook to a bale and unroll it out on the land. We bring carbon to the land. A lot of the old time farmers and a lot of people that just don't understand what it takes to make hay, keep telling me, Josh, why aren't you cutting hay off your farm? You need to cut hay, you need to cut hay. If I cut hay, I gotta fertilize. We cannot rob Peter to pay Paul without having to pay Paul. Get my drift? We gotta fertilize if we're gonna cut hay off of our land and use that hay. So. For now, for the next five years, we're bringing hay to the farm and we're grooming our hay fields. In other words, we'll have enough land to make our own hay in about five years. If you see this, this has got a five year head start on the pastures and this is just the lawn. Now, this serves several purposes. This will be out in the pasture soon, but we're in training mode right now. Training mode meaning we're right close to the house we're in the front yard, we're fertilizing our lawn right now. So we're taking chicken feed and turning it into manure, fertilizing the lawn. What we'll do out here is we'll take chicken feed and manure and make more manure. The chickens will peck through the cow manure behind the cattle, scrape through, get all the bugs out, spread out the manure pats, and thus we'll have a much better setup for better grass. 
we'll be moving this throughout each paddock, each pasture right behind the cows. Now we're not moving it every day because you'll see why. This is a pain in the butt. It is an absolute pain in the butt. This idea came from my buddy Joel Salatin up at Polyface Farm. He has an egg mobile. I have an egg mobile. Ours is a little different than his. Our system is a little different than his. He's got a lot of help. It's just me here on the farm. So it takes a lot of work to do this. And you just don't have time to come out here and spend 40 minutes a day moving chickens. It just doesn't happen. It's just the reality behind it. So they stay in one place for about a week and a half. Now you'll notice this isn't square. First thing I did when I bought my first Premier One fencing right here, and this is electrified fence. There is electric wire inside this fence. This is hot. This is not. This is hot, 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 not. So the down wires or the stay wires are not hot. The line wires are hot and they get smaller as we get closer to the bottom so that we can keep younger birds. Isn't that cool? Now, on the end of each one of these posts, and this post stands at about four feet high, on the ends of them are two spikes. This is what I like. They make one with a single spike. It's really hard to get into the ground. We simply step right on that spike, bam, just like that and that drops our fence into the ground. Let's show you the chicken coop real quick so you guys understand how all this works. If you wanna do it on your place, this is an old hay wagon. We're gonna get you some footage of building this thing. I milled the lumber right off the sawmill and put it all together right up by the shop. This is a hen gear roll out nest box. This is my own little setting. Oh, this guy's got to go. He's going in there. Chickens are chicken, just so you guys know. That's why they're acting <laughs> scared. They're in there. <laughs> Chickens are chicken. Okay, in here is a roll-out nest box. Do we have any eggs? Gosh, no eggs yet. These are young juvenile birds. So again, this is a hay wagon with a bunch of idiots inside of it. Listen to them. Guys, this is not the first day at camp. This is called Run Chicken. It's a programmable door. It automatically opens and closes. I don't know why it's opening now. Got some crust in there, okay? I use a nail and simply store the nail right there. When I want to close them in for the night, I block it off. They're gonna to want to come running out. Check it out. Hey, dudes. What's up, guys? Gosh, they're acting like a bunch of idiots. This is not the first time these chickens have seen me. I don't know. Listen to that. You hear it? It's ridiculous. Chickens are chicken. This is our ramp. You can see where the chickens have been lounging underneath the coop. It gets a little more pressure right up underneath the coop. We're going to pull this hopefully by hand to the next section where we're going to move them. Guys, you don't need to freak out, okay? <laughs> Our feeders and our waterers are right here. This waterer took a little hit yesterday. I don't know what the heck happened there, but uh, took a little hit. <laughs> and our feeders are right over here. These are Brower feeders. I'll post links to everything we're using down in the video description for you guys in case you wanna pick up some stuff like this for yourself. Okay, let's get busy. We're gonna move this fence and then we're gonna go check on the cows. I'll show you guys how all this works. What are you doing, boy? You wanna just lay down and get rubbed on? Oh, what a good dog. I don't have my brush. I can't brush you right now. You stink, you stink so bad. You stink so bad. <laughs> Here's what you're not supposed to do. Blooper. <laughs> Don't make it so tight you can't get through without getting shocked. Oh, oh, so tight. You're stupid. Turn it on. Don't get shocked. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm wet too. It's not good. <laughs> Safe.
Oh, now you're crowing, huh? Uh -uh. The new chicks are learning how to crow. <laughs> and that's what they sound like. Freedom! So we got it all moved, guys. This is, look at me, I'm soaking wet. It is super hot out here. This is North Carolina. This is the heat. It's only 80 degrees, but the heat index is like 800. Uh, come on, birdies. My guess is they'll go either straight to the feeders or straight to the waterers. Most likely straight to the waterers after being in the coop all night. We've got hens and roosters in here. Yeah, they're going to the feeders. As soon as one goes over to the waterers, all the rest of them will go. It's just the nature of them. That squash we picked is laying right there. They'll pick that thing clean also. Come on, kids. <laughs> So the word for this is called flighty. These are flighty birds, the American breeze or American breast watch. As I walk up on them, they're all very flighty. They're all very scared. There's only one that's like really people friendly. So if you're looking for a pet, the American breeze is not the ideal chicken. I just, I'm telling you, a blue laced or a silver laced Wyandotte is the best pet chicken in my humble opinion. These guys are not pets. They are utility. Let's go get the cows, get them moved. They're all waiting for me down here, I think. But first, God, we got yard snacks here. Let's see if anybody's ripe, ready for eating. Not quite ready. Ugh. Boy, I could use a yard snack. <laughs> Woo, cows! Morning, guys! Morning, Moo Moos! Hey, butthead, how you doing this morning? How's my friend? How you doing? Hey, butthead, where's my lovin'? Where's my lovin'? There you go, little girl. These are the cows. 24! Yeah! They want to move bad, guys. We are in a drought, and these cows are absolutely sick of eating hay. They are sick of it. We got green grass over on the other side of the farm, but I don't know how long it's going to last. We'll probably end up feeding hay again this summer if we don't get any more rain. I may have to sell some cows. I mean, that's just the long and short of it. We just had 200 bales of hay delivered out at the cost of $10,000. Hey, guys. Give me a butthead. What you doing? I bet you wish you had one of them peaches just like me. So I've got to call them all up. I got to make sure everybody's up here and out of the woods. It's nice and, I say nice and cool this morning. I'm soaking wet. <laughs> it's, it's a lot cooler this morning than it normally is and we got good cloud cover. So our goal is we've got to move them across the public road right here. So we're going to shoot right across the public road and we've just got to make sure we've got all of our babies. Last time we moved the cows, one of the babies got left behind. Last time we moved them across here. So we got to make sure. We only have one really, really young baby, so I've got to keep an eye on that critter. It's number five's baby. Right, 24? You're pregnant. You're super pregnant. So the goal is move the cows from here across this road, which you saw me build not too long ago this winter and into that pasture up there. Awesome, and I gotta run over as soon as I move them and close the gate, because they're gonna run right for the gate. <laughs> Stop. Strain right geared reel. This is called poly braid from Strain Right. All this stuff is from Farm Fence Solutions. We'll also be using Strain Right pigtail step-in posts. These step in just like the posts we put in the ground a second ago for the chickens. We're gonna run a wire from one gate to the other gate. It doesn't need to be powered. The animals respect the wire. Now they probably will try and stop and graze a little bit right here, but we're gonna go ahead and get everything all set up. I hear ya. I hear ya.
Like I said, this line will not be hot, so all I'm gonna do is tie it off to the edge of the fence over there, open the gate, and we're good to go. The only concern I have here are stragglers wandering underneath the fence, and that would be babies. So we might have to run some babies back up underneath the fence. This is always the most stressful part of farming here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Rounding the cows up, banding them, none of that is stressful. Baby cows, no stress. Moving across this roadway, stress. Hopefully, I don't have to run after any cows. I don't think I'm gonna have to. You notice this is what I call, and what most people call, like Temple Grandin. Uh, if you don't know who Temple is, I'll post a link uh, at the end of this video to my interview with Temple Grandin about low stress animal handling. But this is all low stress animal handling. Low stress on the animals, not so low on me. 50 animals being let out of the pasture. Come on, babies. There we go. Come on. Come on, get up. Get up. Good girls. That is perfect. Get up, girls and boys. Hey, Donnie. This is Donnie the bull. Got a couple more young bulls in here, too. Come on. Come on. Slowing down a little bit, a little bottleneck. That's our baby we were going to watch. Number five's baby. All right, go ahead. That's a young bull. Giddy, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. There's one baby that's gone out of the fence over there. Hopefully it figures out how to get back under the fence. It will in a second. Go ahead, Tammy. Get up. Get up, girls. Giddy up. Hey, big boy. Hey, big boy. Okay, so I gotta step outside the fence. I told you guys we'd get a little bottlenecked in here. This baby is out. This is a young female. Go ahead. Go under. You got it. There you go. Not really too awful worried once we get the uh, babies in. These guys can graze a little on their way. It's okay, just makes more good milk. Okay, 40, you gotta go, tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle. People talk about Angus beef cows as being super aggressive, very grumpy, very hard to work with. Are you seeing that here? No, these animals don't get yelled at, whistled at, yipped at, no problem. The worst thing that I ever have to do is go yip, 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 yip. Good girls, and that's it. This is our new pasture with our grasses. There isn't a lot of high quality forage in here right now, guys, it just isn't. But these cows will fatten right back up and we've got rain in the forecast for the next four or five days. I'll shut that gate in a minute. I trust my cows, I know my cows. Let's walk up here and check everybody out. This is Donnie, he's a South Pole bull, South Pole, is a breed which my buddy Greg Judy really pushes. It's a smaller cow that's got better grass genetics. In other words, it thrives on grass without having to have any sort of outside input like dewormers and medications. Right, Donnie? Good job, bud. Good job, bud. Donnie's been breeding all these girls. Notice the hay. This hay is stashed into this area because this is where we'll be feeding this hay, this pasture. Donnie's creeping up from behind. Um, <laughs> never turn your back on a bull, never trust a bull anyway. Okay. Make sure everything's closed off. They have access to the water tank right here. And they'll have access in here for 12 hours. Tonight at eight o'clock, I will come back out. I will open this gate and then we'll have access to six acres over here. The next day, we'll open every bit of this and let these cows graze this. While it's drought time, we've just gotta go for desperate measures. Desperate times, call for desperate measures here on the Stony Ridge. Awesome, just double checking all my gates. That one's good up there. Let's show you what we're using to power this electric fence. Hey buddy, where's Bud? Is that you, big Bud? Is that you, Bud? That ain't you. You're, you're Bud's brother. 
<laughs> Bud is one of my favorite cows. He comes up and plays with me all the time. This is Mona. So the apparatus up here, you've seen it in the past. This is called the Razor Grazer we're walking up to. So I'll post a link in the video description. It's from Range Ward. Range Ward. Inside this, this is an all self-contained grazing operation machine. It comes with some poly braid or forget what they call this. It's a specific name. I'll post it on the screen. Um, it's a braided wire solar panel that flips up. We can access our post and all of our equipment's right in here. We got a fence charger, we got a battery, we got a charging system. Everything's all self-contained. Hook it to the four-wheeler and move it around. Once again, the moving farm. Awesome, guys. Well, that's what happened this morning on the Stony Ridge Farm. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week or weekend. If you have any questions, please post them. This is how I rotationally graze my animals. We intensively rotationally graze. This feeds the land. These cows haven't been on this section of land for about 40 days now, 40 days. And it hasn't recovered because we haven't had rain, a significant rain in 30. Post a rain tonight. Cross your fingers for me, guys. Pray for rain. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Right, girls? Woo! Woo! That's what I wanted to hear. When they're eating, they ain't mooing. You got time to moo, you got time to chew. Woo! See y'all. So humid. Look, I, you can't see through the sunglasses. They're fogged up. It's so humid. Oh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I can't believe I left that sprinkler on. What a dummy. I sat there in the living room last night and asked myself, now, did you turn the sprinkler off? I think a cow stepped on your camera. Ooh, it held up pretty good.